Then afterward, when my life is through, I'll return to your glorious presence and be forever with you. The Lord is my best friend, my shepherd. I always have more than enough. He offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. His tracks take me to an oasis of peace, the quiet brook of bliss. That's where he restores and revives my life. He opens before me pathways to God's pleasure and leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name. Lord, even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness, fear will never conquer me, for you already have. You remain close to me and lead me through it all the way. Your authority is my strength and my peace. The comfort of your love takes away my fear. I will never be lonely, for you are near. You become my delicious feast. Even when my enemies dare to fight, you anoint me with your fragrance of the Holy Spirit. You give me all I can drink of, you, until my heart overflows. So why would I fear the future? For your goodness and love pursue me all the days of my life. Then afterward, when my life is through, I'll return to your glorious presence and be forever with you. is my best friend, my shepherd. I always have more than enough. He offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. His tracks take me to an oasis of peace, the quiet brook of bliss. That's where he restores and revives my life. He opens before me pathways to God's pleasure and leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name. friend, my shepherd. I always have more than enough. He offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. His tracks take me to an oasis of peace, the quiet brook of bliss. That's where he restores and revives my life. He opens before me pathways to God's pleasure and leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name. Lord, even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness, fear will never conquer me, for you already have. You remain close to me and lead me through it all the way. Your authority is my strength and my peace. The comfort of your love takes away my fear. I will never be lonely, for you are near. You become my delicious feast. Even when my enemies dare to fight, you anoint me with your fragrance of the Holy Spirit. You give me all I can drink of, you, until my heart overflows. So why would I fear the future? For your goodness and love pursue me all the days of my life. Then afterward, when my life is through, I'll return to your glorious presence and be forever with you. is my best friend, my shepherd. I always have more than enough. He offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. His tracks take me to an oasis of peace, the quiet brook of bliss. 
That's where he restores and revives my life. He opens before me pathways to God's pleasure and leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name. Lord, even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness, fear will never conquer me, for you already have. You remain close to me and lead me through it all the way. Your authority is my strength and my peace. The comfort of your love takes away my fear. I will never be lonely, for you are near. You become my delicious feast. Even when my enemies dare to fight, you anoint me with your fragrance of the Holy Spirit. You give me all I can drink of, you, until my heart overflows. So why would I fear the future? For your goodness and love pursue me all the days of my life. Then afterward, when my life is through, I'll return to your glorious presence and be forever with you. Lord is my best friend, my shepherd. I always have more than enough. He offers a resting place for me in his luxurious life. His tracks take me to an oasis of peace, the quiet brook of bliss. That's where he restores and revives my life. He opens before me pathways to God's pleasure and leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring all
your mercy never fails All my days have been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head down I will sing of the goodness of God
Sometimes it's just good to meditate on His goodness. Oh, we meditate on Your goodness. Come on. Just think about all the victories He's won for you. Every time the devil tries to remind you of a bad thing in your life, just look at how God brought you through because you're here right now and you're still worshiping God. So the devil gotta wait before him oh thank you Jesus thank you Jesus I love you and I love my Lord to
good God, don't we? Hallelujah. He is worthy of our celebration of Him. Thank you, Lord. Oh, what a joy it is to celebrate the goodness of God. Our God is good. He is good. you know that the men are going to meet this Saturday at 830. If you want, if you like to eat and you'd like to be encouraged, then Saturday is a good place for you. Hallelujah. And you can give as the Lord leads you and guides you and directs you. Those of you that are here, you can give any time during the service. Those of you that are watching, you can give online through our website. Hallelujah. God is good, isn't he? He is so good. I want you to go to Luke chapter 5. A little tweak in the direction. (laughs) Luke chapter 5. See, when Jesus left this earth, he left his partner, the Holy Spirit. From the moment Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River and the Holy Spirit came on him, he was led by the Holy Spirit in everything that he said and in everything that he did and in every place that he went. He never did anything by chance. It was all by design. And when he left, he told us, he said, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. But I'm going to give you another comforter One just like me, one who is God, one who is divine. He's the Holy Spirit. He is part of the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And he's here to help you. He's a helper. He's a guide, he's a teacher, 
He's a strengthener. He's a standby. Amen? So in Luke chapter 5, verse 17... Well, we better back up a little bit. Let's go to verse 15. But the news about him was spreading farther and large crowds kept gathering to hear him to be healed of their illnesses. But Jesus himself would often, everybody say often, would slip away to the wilderness and pray in seclusion. See, if you want to be have a good partnership with the Holy Spirit, you have to have a good connection with God and good communication with God. Yes. And I want you to think about how busy Jesus was, but yet he found time to slip away and talk with his father about what was next, what was coming up. And then we get to verse 17. After he had spent some time with the Father, and he was ready and prepared, one day, as he was teaching, what was he doing? So the simple, pure word was going forth. He was telling them the good news of his kingdom. He was telling them of what they could have, of the benefits that God has provided for them. He was teaching. And there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting there. Who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea. That's like two counties. And from Jerusalem... And the what? I'm going to say the power. The power of the Lord was where? It was present with who? Who's him? And what is Jesus? He's the word. So anytime that you're in a place... Where the word is going forth, God's power is present. Yes, amen. Because amen. God, God's power is present with his word. Yes. And what was the power there to do? Heal. To heal. To heal what? Anything that needed to be healed. Yes. Broken heart, broken body, broken life, broken relationship. He can heal it all. You know, the same power that raised Christ from the dead is the same power that saves you, is the same power that heals you, is the same power that gives you strength, is the same power that provides for you, is the same power that leads you. It's the same power. The power of the Lord was present with him to heal. Some men came carrying on a stretcher. Have you ever carried anybody on a stretcher? It can get heavy. I've never done it to a degree, but in Boy Scouts, when I had to get my my merit badge, we had to do some things like that, some first aid things. And I remember my father and I, we were in this Klondike Derby, and we had to make biscuits in the skin of a navel orange. Because the navel oranges are thicker and you can actually put the biscuit mix in the orange and cook it in the fire. Wow. It works. Cool. We made a biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think men would come carrying a man on a stretcher? Because they knew something was present. Yeah. Something unlike any other meeting, Jesus' meetings were unique. Because he taught as one having authority. Mm -hmm. 
not like the scribes I'm just regurgitating information it was fresh manna from heaven it was living water it was new wine it was inside understanding and wisdom and power And they tried bringing him in and lay him down in front of Jesus. But finding no way to bring him in. You know, if you want to receive from the power, you've got to be determined. You've got to be perseverant. Right? You could go to the story in Matthew 15 about the Syrophoenician woman. Her daughter was grievously vexed with a devil. Okay? She was a heathen. She came to Jesus and she said, my daughter is grievously vexed. Now the devil just doesn't show up one day. He's got to be let in somewhere, somehow. Right? And um, she came to Jesus. He didn't answer her a word. She went to the disciples, they said, send her away, she's bugging us, this is my my paraphrase. Uh, Then she came to Jesus again, and he said, I'm not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And uh, then she's still there, and uh, she said, uh, it's not, Jesus said, it's not meat for me to take the children's bread and give it to dogs, you know. And then she said, yes, Lord, but the dogs eat the crumbs of the table. My point is this, she didn't quit. Too many people quit when the world applies just a little bit of pressure. They quit doing the things that they know that they need to do. A minister once told me a long time ago, he said, in consistency lies the power. Doing something over and over again, because that demonstrates you believe it so much. How many know as a believer you got to have a refuse to quit attitude? You can't say it's too hard when you have the power of Almighty God. You can't say the mountain's too high when you got power to move the mountain. You can't say my enemy is too big because you can knock him down with a rock. You can't say that there's too many of them because there's more with us than with them. So these men, they were carrying, maybe he was a friend. I don't know. They couldn't get him in front of Jesus. Because of the crowd, so how many know, when you can't get in one way, say there's always another way. And they went up on the roof. Sometimes you got to go higher. You got to think outside the box. This would be the box. The roof is outside the box. How did that idea of getting on the roof come to them? I bet the Holy Spirit. Now these were people who weren't even filled with the Holy Spirit yet. Because Jesus was not yet glorified. But how many know God wants the best for you? Yep. Yes. He has the best laid plans, the best opportunities, the best blessings, the best benefits, the best way of doing things. I could just see the Holy Spirit saying, hey guys, hey guys, come over here, come over here. They went up onto the roof, removed some tiles to make an opening. And lowered him through the tiles with his stretcher into the middle of the crowd. (laughs) Did you know that faith will find a way? Say, my faith faith always finds a way. It always comes up with a solution. Say, my faith faith in God never lets me down. It never fails. It never loses. It always wins. Notice faith in God because faith in other things you will lose. Okay? 
So Jesus, obviously, when you remove tiles, there's probably some dust and some residue that falls. So Jesus looked up, and uh, this is the Amplified, when Jesus saw their active faith, and we say active faith. Active faith. See, the Holy Spirit, He is a helper. He is, did you know a coach in baseball does not play the game? He instructs the players to play the game. He doesn't, he doesn't go out to the mound and pitch, or he doesn't take the football and throw it. No, but he comes up with a strategy, he comes up with a way, and he teaches that way and that strategy to his players. And the players play the game. Yes. Too many people want the Holy Spirit, their coach, to play their game. They want the Holy Ghost to do what you need to do. He's a helper. He will help you do what you need to do. Yes. He'll show you how. He'll give you the strength. He'll give you the wisdom. He'll give you what you need, but you got to be the doer. Yes. The Holy Spirit is the teacher. We're the doers. Yes. Yes. I mean, he already does God's will. Yes. Amen. So when the word saw their faith. In other words, the word agreed with what they were doing. The word said, now that's faith. That's belief. That's trust. If you're lowering a sick man down on a stretcher from the roof, that's trust. Amen? And so they lowered him right in front of Jesus and his first response was man your sins are forgiven. But he didn't come there to get saved. Really? Did you know that salvation is sozo? It's life. It's the whole enchilada. It's wholeness. Amen? Amen. Salvation is more than just having your name written in heaven. It's, it's having everything turned around in your life. Everything turned right. Amen? It's a total makeover. Yes. So the scribes and the Pharisees began to consider and question the implications of what he had said, saying, Who is this man who speaks blasphemies by claiming the rights and prerogatives of God? Hmm, that should have been a clue to them <laughs> who he was. But they couldn't see past their own religious blinders. Who can forgive sins that is remove guilt, nullify sins, penalty, and assign righteousness except God alone? But Jesus, knowing their hostile thoughts, you know, religion is hostile to the spirit. Who was the most hostile group to Jesus? The Pharisees, the scribes, the Sadducees. Right? Jesus, knowing their hostile thoughts, answered them why are you questioning these things in your heart see they were questioning okay which is easier to say your sins are forgiven you or to say get up and walk which is easier they're, they're both the same there's no difference in forgiveness and healing amen did you know that sometimes you need to be forgiven to receive your healing Did you know that holding bitterness against people will make you sick? Why do you think the Bible says don't let a root of bitterness spring up? Don't let the root... Listen, you've got to deal with bitterness when it's a root. Another sermon. Okay? But in order that you may know that the Son of Man, the Messiah, has authority and what? Power. On earth to forgive sins. That, and by the way, that's dunamis power. That's dynamic power. Dynamite power. TNT. Explosive power. 
He said to the paralyzed man, I say to you, the word's talking, get up, pick up your stretcher and go home. Didn't even lay hands on him, just spoke the word. Why? They'd already acted in faith. Did you know that when those men began to lower that man, they already believed he was going to be healed. Yep. Otherwise you wouldn't have lowered him from the roof. You wouldn't have taken those steps if you hadn't already believed it. Believers are receivers. And believers receive it before they actually have it. Once the word was spoken, he immediately stood up before them, picked up his stretcher, and went home glorifying and praising God. He came in moaning and he left glorifying and praising. Amen. Amen. And they were all astonished and they began to glorify God. How many know? There was a chain reaction. When the word and the power are seen and heard, it causes a chain reaction. And the group then got in on the glorifying. I'm believing for a chain reaction tonight. Amen. Like dominoes. Yes. Yes. You know, if you line up dominoes yes. and you push one, they're all going to fall. Yeah. Right? right? I'll never forget one time, long time ago when I was a single man in Illinois. And we were, I was with a group of friends. There was probably about seven of us. Don't know exactly how many. And um, we were at a friend's house and one of the guys was going through a rough time so we decided we're going to pray so we all got in a circle we held hands and we just prayed in the Holy Ghost what does that mean to pray it means to pray in tongues if you're baptized in the Holy Spirit you can pray in tongues it's a way to edify yourself in God Jude 20 there's all kinds of benefits from the Holy Ghost and we just began to pray in tongues. We're just in this circle. And we're praying in tongues. All of a sudden, this person over here, they started chuckling. <laughs> then the chuckle became a, a laugh. Then the laugh became a bell. Then, then, then it went to this other person here. And then it went to this other person. Another per Pretty soon, it was just a matter of minutes. And that whole circle was just busting out laughing. Why? Because we activated the power of the Holy Spirit. And he turned a bad situation around. He relieved the pressure. Amen? He took away the stress. The Holy Ghost is the best stress remover you'll ever encounter. He's good for every age. Back in sixth grade... I was attending a public school and the teacher was our science teacher and he was a little weird. <laughs> um, he had spent a year in Japan and so I had him for homeroom but then I had him as a science teacher and he was telling us one day how he could walk through walls. Okay. <laughs> But that's beside the point. But he had one of those old time crank telephones. Right? You know you had to crank it? Well, it's actually a little generator in that phone, right? That you crank. And he was talking about electricity. Alright? And he had someone hold the wire of that thing. And when he cranked it, I mean, you get, you get a little zap. Right? And then we all held hands and we were a conduit, right? Because electricity can flow through your body. And one was holding the wire, we're all holding, and everybody got zapped. <laughs> right? <laughs> because electricity, how electricity works is, is representative of how the Holy Spirit works. See, all you have to do is connect to the source and you can get the benefits of the zapping. Amen? Uh, go with me to um, Ephesians chapter 6. 
Ephesians chapter 6. Not one of this is in my notes. Not one. Some of y'all needed some power tonight. Yeah. See, what, what are we doing on these? We're learning how to yield. How to flow. How to move. And how to respond. To who? To the Holy Spirit. See? He doesn't perform religious duties. He is a lot more fluid. See, religion is stiff. The Holy Spirit is fluid and free. Mm -hmm. All right? One thing, there's one thing about the Holy Spirit, no matter where you go, He always has a move or a direction. And whether you get there fast or slow, or you're, you're winding like this, it doesn't matter. You, there is a particular direction that he wants to go. Okay? So after he tells us, or no, this is before he tells us about the armor, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. All right? This is the Lord's desire for us. He says, be strong in what? The Lord. That's representative of the word, right? Draw your strength through your union with him, your relationship with him. Him is the word. We, we have to be strong in the word. You should at least read the Bible through every year. You should at least read the Bible every day. Why? It's your spiritual food. See, God thinks differently than we do. We have to, when we get the word in us, we get his thoughts in us. How he thinks, right? I just heard a testimony. Um, a guy was called to preach. And the Lord told him for the next 30 days, I want you to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John on your knees three times. Four Gospels, all the way through, three times on your knees. Didn't have to do it all at once, but it, he had 30 days to do that. And you know what? He did it. Amen? Okay, so you be strong in the Lord, but there's something else that, he, there's a conjunction there. And... Conjunction, junction, what's your function, right? I'm hooking up words and phrases, right? That's from old school, high school rock, right? I don't know why these things come up when I'm preaching. I... We're not just to be strong in the word, but we're supposed to be strong in also in what? In the power. The power of his might. Well, if the Word is Him, what's the power? Power is the Holy Ghost. He is the power of God. He is the demonstration and the power. God, Jesus told His disciples, He said, Go to Jerusalem until you be a dude with what? Power from on high. Mary said, How am I going to have a baby when I don't know a man? The power of the highest is going to come upon you. Amen. We've got to be strong in the Lord. We've got to be strong in the Word. And we've got to be strong in the power. Yes. This is a balanced Christian diet. Yes. If all you have is Word, Um, you uh, are puffed up. If all you have is spirit, you blow up. But when you have the word and the spirit together, you grow up. Amen? So, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His boundless might. Say strong in the Lord. Strong in, strong in the power. Strong. See, God's power will never violate His word. And His word is 
It's what allows the, the power to work. Okay? In creation. What did God see before he made the world? There was darkness, right? It was void, right? Who was hovering? Why was he just hovering? Because he needed the word to activate motion. And once God said, let there be light, he went from hovering to creating. When the word was spoken, the Holy Spirit began to be animated. Yes. You know, animation, cartoons, they look like they're alive, but they're not because they're animated. But the Holy Spirit, the word animates the spirit and the spirit validates the word. And when we have both, we have a balanced Christian diet. Jesus was the Word, but the Word was led by the Spirit. Jesus told a woman at the well, you need to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Spirit, truth, power, Word, right? See, it's through the Word and the Spirit that the miraculous happens. And tonight, we're going to light the fuse. Growing up, we used to get fireworks, things that explode, things that go boom and make the sky bright. I grew up with guns and fireworks and I'm 51 now. Never had any problem except for, uh, <laughs> well, we, won't, we won't go there. <laughs> Where is the power of a firecracker? It's within it. And that power won't hurt you until it comes in contact with fire. And firecrackers have a wick. And you light that wick. We used to have a mailbox on our front porch. <laughs> No, I didn't blow the mailbox off the porch, but we would put M80s in the mailbox and we light it. And when it goes boom, the lid would go like this, boom, boom. And then we would put firecrackers in that because we had an apple tree in the backyard and we would put firecrackers in apples and then you'd make applesauce, right? <laughs> Amen. But see, here's the thing. The firecracker has the power within, and you are the fire, you have the power within. But when the, the anointing is the lighting of the wick, and when that wick is lit, an explosion happens. Once that wick is lit, you might just have a few seconds. Light it and run. Amen? Light it and run. So now we're going to let the power of God. Move in this place. Amen? If you have a need in your life, and you need God to do something, the power is here, because the Word was here, and the anointing is here, ready to light your fuse. When the anointing connects with your dunamis, the dunamis that's on the inside of you, it goes boom. Amen? Amen? And for those of you that are watching, I just want to pray with you right now. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that they connect, anyone who's watching this can connect with the power of God right where they are in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that those people who are watching are strong in the Lord and in the power of your might. And if you've got to correct anything, make the correction. If you've got to adjust anything, make the adjustment. Amen. And receive the power and the word, the results of the power and the word. Be whole. Be made alive. Be forgiven. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Hallelujah. And, and we're just going to get things started right here. I think that there's a wick that's ready to go in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we're going to strike this wick right now. So it's burning. It's burning. It's burning in the name of Jesus. Boom! In Jesus' name. Right there. Right there. Hallelujah. Now, I didn't even touch them. I didn't even crack a joke. But see, something on the inside of them has been stirred up. Right? There's a chemical reaction taking place right now. A little bit of word, a little bit of spirit, and now you can see it and now you can hear it. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you right now for moving in this place in the name of Jesus. Moving with fire. Father, we're going to light some wicks tonight in Jesus' name. I've got a torch or a flame because there's fire shut up in my bones. It's a never-ending, continually illuminating fire in the name of Jesus. There's fire to roast your marshmallows right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I just thank you, Father, for the fire of God to flow like it's never have flown before in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we're letting that fire go right now. In Jesus' name. Fire. 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 Oh, Father, we give you thanks and praise. You know, even young people can experience the fire of God. You know? What a privilege it is for you to grow up in church. You've gotten far ahead than whenever I was in the name of Jesus. And Father, I just release your fire right now. Lord, the fire to burn away the wood and the hay and the stubble right now. In the name of Jesus, we're releasing the fire of God. The power of God in the name of Jesus. I give you thanks and praise. Thank you, Lord, for your fire. Fan that flame right now. Fire, like a blacksmith. Fire, He's got that, that big thing that he squeezes. Fire, He's cranking up the heat right now. Hallelujah. Because there's some metal that he's got to shake and form and fashion in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you thanks and praise for your fire. In the name of Jesus, a fire that cannot be put out, a flame that cannot be stopped. In the name of Jesus, the fire of God, Lord, it brings healing, health, and strength. In the name of Jesus, oh hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, we're putting coals in this fire right now. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, the heat of the anointing of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for your fire. The fire. The fire will make you a live wire. Potent and powerful. God's given you power for this very hour in the name of Jesus. He's filling your kerosene tank full in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I give you thanks and praise, Father, that you ignite fire in the name of Jesus. Fire. Oh, the fire will take you higher. The fire will pull you from that fire and that clay. That fire will give you a brand new day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Fire, Josh. Fire. The fire of God. God operates in fire. There's flames that are coming before his throne. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, let the fire flow right now. In Jesus' name. Fire. Fire.
comes in a forest, it burns away the old stuff and then the new stuff starts to spring forward. I thank you, Father, that you're doing a new thing, a new thing, a new thing in the, in the, in the name of Jesus. A new He's thing. You're making way for new growth. You're making way for new revelation. You're making way for new understanding in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Father, let that fire flow right now. In Jesus' name. Now here's a man who likes fire. But this holy fire, it won't burn you, it won't leave a mark, but it'll light your life and it'll light away in the dark. In the name of Jesus. Father, let that fire begin to flow. In the name of Jesus, a combustible engine on the inside of him, Father. You put fuel in that fire. Let it burn bright all through the night. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. sound booth. Fire because of your truth. Fire, fire, fire. Fire, fire. In a good way, you've been fired. Fired up. Fired up. Fired up. Hallelujah. Without fires, but you can't put this fire out. This is a holy fire. It's meant to burn because the flame won't hurt you. God is an all consuming fire in the name of Jesus. Oh, we give you thanks and praise, Father. Thank you, Lord. Put a fire on that guitar. Hallelujah. There's some flames shooting out of that guitar in the name of Jesus. Sparks are flying. You didn't know that your instrument was a sparkler. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank God for the fire. Thank God for the power. Thank God for the anointing. Thank God for the word. Thank God. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Let that fire burn. Let all the evil turn. Yeah. Oh, the most shocking about the soul that I'm not my mama, mama. It was the fire that led Peter to Cornelius' house. Cornelius was the first Gentile, and his family and all that were in his house, they were the first Gentiles to be filled with the Holy Ghost, to be baptized with fire, and to speak in tongues, just like they did on the day of Pentecost. Cornelius didn't know what he was missing, but the angel said, you go get Peter, and I'll, I'll, that's all you got to do is go get Peter, and I'll do the rest. He said, I'll do my part, and God will do the rest. Aren't you glad we have a God who does the rest? Hallelujah! By the fire of God makes you free. It makes you bold. It causes you to stand strong. It's the power that we need for this hour. Let's be a flamethrower for Jesus. You know, when he comes back to this earth, out of his mouth is going to come a fiery sword. Hallelujah. Yeah, wave that fiery flag. That fire, fire, we release it. That fire, in the name of Jesus, let her experience the fire. Father, let the anointing and the fire just flow right now in 
Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for touching her and filling her full, full, full in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, God is a creator, and he loves doing new things, things that he hasn't done before. And that's why we're learning, see, when the Holy Spirit moves, it's our job just to respond to him. Amen? But what will I know to do? He'll tell you what to do. It'll just spring up in your heart. Amen? Father, we just give you thanks and praise for tonight. Thank you for moving in our midst. Thank you, Father, for demonstrating your power and your glory and your goodness. We love you, Lord. Bless these people tonight, Father. Let them take this fire into their homes, into their neighborhoods, into the workplaces, into their families. Father, I thank you that when they go home, they're going to be red hot in the name of Jesus. We just give you the glory and the praise and the honor. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. You're dismissed. Have a good night.